And so, so you're all very welcome to this webinar on territorial dialogue, uh, a conversational webinar held by Forum Synergies. My name is Davy Phillip. I'm a facilitator based in Ireland, and um, I'm going to keep things on track today. Um, so we're inviting people to rename themselves if they want to um, avail of breakouts in French uh, or be in a breakout room with French speakers. So if you can change your name, which is the little dots on the top right hand corner, rename, you can either put an F for French or an E for English. Uh, that would be uh, great um, to do that. Isabel will be translating, so you can go into interpretation if you're a French speaker and would like to uh, listen in French. Isabel is interpreting in the interpretation box down there. Thank you, Isabel. Um, people are still arriving, um, so I'll just again, we're going to be using chat and we're going to be using Mentimeter, where we'll give you the link um, to harvest some of the insights and reflections from our conversations. So I am going to introduce just uh, Mar Marina from Forum Synergies, just to say a few words to um, welcome us all, Marina. Thank you, Davy. Thank you, and uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar again. So I'm uh, Marina Guedon. Uh, before maybe presenting myself and the, the webinar, uh, pour les Français, uh, vous avez l'interprétation uh, sur la ligne du bas. Vous avez certainement l'option interprétation, un petit globe, et vous sélectionnez en français si, uh, afin de pouvoir écouter Isabelle. So I will follow in English now. Um, I'm based in Valencia in Spain and I'm a part-time coordinator of Forum Synergies, uh, a task I share with my colleague Simone. So Forum Synergy is a non-profit association uh, of citizen practitioners and organizations engaged in sustainable rural development in Europe. Um, its mission is to uh, Ex enable the exchange of experiences, to promote synergies, and to support a constructive dialogue uh, between stakeholders uh, from local to European level uh, in Europe. So, and just to remind it, our activities are funded by uh, Fondation France and Fondation pour le Progrès de l'Homme, so without them we couldn't uh, be there today. Um, so visit our website if you want to know more. And today, um, the aim of our uh, webinar is to follow a little bit uh, a journey we started six months ago. Um, we organized in February a, web a first webinar together with uh, this core group, uh, David Philip from Cultivate, Chris Chapman from Change Exploratory, Philippe Barret from Geyser. And the, the aim of this first webinar was to widen the scope um, on dialogue. Um, during this webinar, we discovered different contexts and experiences in which dialogue was implemented, such as territorial dialogue, community dialogue, neighborhood parliaments in their sociocratic model, or dialogue on climate with the campaign there was in Ireland. So it was an opportunity to know a little bit uh, on, on, on the, what was the, the situation and to highlight some learnings and some warnings also on, about processes of dialogue just a few ones, uh, it's my choice, and there were, of course, a lot of them, but we thought or we, we expressed that we should acknowledge that people are at different stages when we are starting a process of dialogue, that we need to link be better awareness and action when we are in the process of dialogue, uh, that we should also um, make effort to have more diversity and to involve better people in our processes, um, that dialogue is about finding a common ground, but working on the needs of the people and the organizations, and also uh, among others that we needed skill facilitators. So after this first webinar, which was uh, a quite broad uh, approach, um, when we discussed about organizing another online event, we wonder what the orientation should be and what would be attractive, interesting for you. Um, so that's when the, the question on how dialogue can help local communities 
change their relationship with their place and env environment came. Uh, it, it became really clearer also because of the, the, the current context of crisis and, and, and of challenges, environmental challenges, social challenges, economical ones. So here's our proposal today um, to have that conversation with two uh, experienced uh, facilitators. And we hope that we will discover new approaches, but also draw some learnings all together. Uh, Davy? Mm -hmm. The floor of the screen is yours again, so thank you and enjoy. Uh, thank you. Um, so welcome everyone um, and thanks for that uh, opening Marina and thanks again for Forum Synergy, um, Forum Synergies for uh, hosting these conversations where we've been really exploring the potential of dialogue um, for communities to resolve issues or to progress projects or to really build a sense of resilience in their local areas or territories. The question that we're framing this session today is, what is the potential for new dialogue approaches to help local communities face current challenges? And we'll be exploring what's new and emerging for community facilitators and how, um, how might a regenerative approach to dialogue contribute to the resilience of rural territories. As Marina said earlier this year, we held this webinar exploring how social dialogue can help us build more resilient communities, help us protect and restore ecosystems, and help us take action together on climate and other challenges in our local areas. In that session, we heard and learned from practitioners uh, who facilitate neighborhood, bioregional, climate and territorial dialogue. And today we're going to build on that and dive much deeper into territorial dialogue as an approach to engage communities and local stakeholders in deeply uh, participatory processes. So in this session today, um, we're going to have uh, a conversation uh, with, held by Chris Chapman, who is an experienced facilitator of systemic dialogue based in Ireland. And he'll host this conversation with Erika Zaretti, an activist and practitioner in the field of community resilience and human rights based in Catalonia. And Philippe Barrett, a specialized mediator in territorial dialogue and environmental conflict resolution, who's based in France. We're gonna harvest reflections from the conversation that we'll experience and hear uh, in the, the, the chat and in Menti, we'll give you the link. And we're really looking um, to, to explore and share insights. So I'm gonna invite you in the chat all the way through to maybe share reflections or signpost us to maybe a tool or um, a resource that'd be very useful. Um, and then using Mentimeter, we're going to harvest insights from the breakout room. We're going to have a breakout room um, with four people uh, exploring uh, what we need to develop local dialogue in our, our local areas. That'll be a conversation amongst yourselves. And we'll, we'll harvest that into the Mentimeter so that we've really got a record and we're, we're building a sense of the resources, the assets, the competencies we might need. Uh, and to, to move us forward into territorial dialogue. Just to remember that if you want to be in a French speaking breakout room, please put an F in front of your name. So rename and put an F in front of your name. If you're happy with English, um, please put an E to help us uh, place people in the breakout rooms, but, you're, but you'll be just placed into an English speaking breakout room. Um, and if you're going to be speaking, and even for the, the speakers, just remember Isabel is translating. Um, so if you want to listen to the French interpretation, the interpretation button has um, the opportunity to hear Isabel's translation. And thanks for that, Isabel. So to get started and really practicing um, what I think is, is good practice in allowing everyone to speak in sessions like this, we're actually going to do a pair breakout. Um, so we're going to be put randomly into a breakout room. And I'm going to invite you with whoever you're with 
uh, to say who you are and where you are, where you're from, um, but really maybe share something that you appreciate about dialogue when it is working well. So I'll just repeat that because people are arriving. So to start us off today, we're going to get to hear our own voices and be in a conversation with one other person. You'll be sent to the breakout room randomly, and we're going to invite you just to say who you are and where you're from and share something you appreciate about dialogue when it is working well. Uh, I'm just going to put that into chat so you've got that instruction and that's all clear. There's still people arriving, so this, um, this could be a little difficult for um, just making this work well. But let's give a go. Chris, are you ready to send us to breakout rooms? Great. So you're going to be sent to breakout room. The person with the longest hair can start, just so you don't have to spend time going, who's going to start? Uh, you've got about a minute to introduce who you are, where you are, and something you appreciate about dialogue when it is working well. Have a nice conversation. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. We are going automatically to breakouts, I hope. Yes, I think we're starting. You're still spotlighted, David, which is lovely, but. Yes. <laughs> and you're recording as well. That's okay. Are we in the rooms or are we going to the we rooms? Or? They... Yeah, I think they just have to click the blue button. Sometimes it's hard if you're on your phone. Yeah, I like the longest hair thing. I forgot about that one. <laughs> it's good. Well, it just it just it helps, I think, to the recording then. Three, two, one. Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully that wasn't um, too jarring, too uh, disruptive into your conversations. Hopefully you had an interesting conversation. I'd be very interested for you to share uh, what you appreciate about dialogue and good dialogue when it's working well in the chat. And the chat, this helps us start to build a sense of community so you can introduce who you are and what you appreciate about dialogue when it's working well in the chat. So we can then share um, and build the sense of community. So you're all uh, very welcome back into the main uh, space. We're going to uh, go into a conversation uh, held by Chris Chapman uh, with Erica and Philippe. I'm just going to bring them all into the, um, where, did, where did Philippe go? There you are, Philippe. Um, so I'm going to just hand over to Chris Chapman, who's going to lead this first conversation. Um, Chris, we might reintroduce the speakers or introduce everyone when you're in there, but over to you, Chris. Brilliant. Thank you, Davey. So I'm, I'm based in Ireland as well with Davey. Uh, I do lots of different kinds of facilitation work in, in community groups uh, across Ireland and delighted to be here with Erica and Philippe. Um, the easiest thing I think would be just for, for me to ask you to say a little bit about you know, who you are and what you do uh, and then we'll begin the conversation from there. So do you want to go first Erica just to say uh, a little bit about uh, what, what you get up to in the world? So thank you Chris, uh, thank you very much. I'm Quechua Canadian, um, uh, but living in Spain with a nonprofit cooperative that we started uh, many years ago with a group of uh, environmental and social activists. And my day to day is uh, mostly focused on community resilience processes and, uh, and also working with human rights organizations, which I did in, in my other job many, many years ago. And I, I facilitate um, uh, regional and also municipal processes 
uh, using systemic frameworks and from a regenerative development uh, perspective as well. And also Indigenous, being an uh, Indigenous woman as well. Thank you. Brilliant. And very Brilliant. delighted to be here. Thank you so much. That's great, Eric. Erica, sorry. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Lots lots of great words there. The systemic and indigenous and regional and so on. Brilliant. Uh, Philippe, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? And you're muted. Volontiers, ça va. Vous m'entendez? C'est bon. Eh bien, oui, alors moi je suis basé dans un petit village de Haute-Provence, dans le sud-est de la France, et je voyage beaucoup en France et à l'étranger, et donc moi je suis, vraiment un, je, je suis vraiment un praticien du dialogue territorial, de la médiation environnementale, c'est-à-dire que je passe beaucoup de temps dans ma vie professionnelle à intervenir sur des territoires pour faciliter le dialogue entre différents acteurs, pour résoudre des problèmes, pour monter des projets communs, pour résoudre des conflits. Euh, J'aurai l'occasion d'en parler probablement avec Erika, mais euh, là, en ce moment, je suis vraiment plongé dans trois processus différents. Euh, hier soir, j'ai animé une réunion euh, sur, euh, dans, dans le nord de la France pour euh, travailler, à, comment, à, travailler sur le l'autonomie alimentaire d'un petit territoire, mettre en lien les acteurs pour monter des projets qui favorisent l'approvisionnement la, la, local. Euh, demain soir, j'anime une réunion sur un gros conflit dans une grande forêt, euh, une grande forêt publique. Et la semaine prochaine, je vais euh, en Guyane française euh, pour euh, travailler avec des pêcheurs sur euh, la préservation d'un des plus gros poissons au monde, qui est le mérou géant. Je ne sais pas comment on traduit ça en anglais. Donc, voilà, je suis vraiment un praticien. Euh, J'aurai l'occasion d'en parler. Je fais beaucoup de formation aussi. Euh, voilà, et de temps en temps, euh, je prends le temps un peu de réfléchir, mais pas assez. Brilliant. Thank you, Philippe. So I'm really interested. Sorry, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really interested, I suppose, in you know what are we learning, what's changing over the years. So my guess is we've all been doing this kind of work for quite a long time. Um, and some of what we draw on when we do this work is, you know, uh, uh, traditions and lineages and so on. Uh, and some of what we are learning is fresh, new to us all the time. So um, maybe Erica, what's what's kind of new and fresh in in, in your work and practice, particularly at the moment? Um, I would have to say using a, a regenerative uh, development approach to the territorial processes that we're accompanying. Uh, we came uh, from a tradition more like working mostly in Latin America with uh, indigenous uh, dialogue. Uh, models and working a lot with mostly communities uh, in regions of uh, armed conflict. And uh, when we came here, we used, uh, we were inspired by those kinds of uh, um, reconciliation processes. So I would, I would say it goes even a bit beyond uh, conflict mediation and really see, tries to see and honor um, the, the value and the uh, um, sorry, I'm thinking in Spanish, uh, contributions of each of the sides in, in, a, in a process to either co-create a new strategic plan or to resolve a big territorial issue. And with the regenerative approach, what we see is that it is uh, in a language that is more uh, European or Occidental, and it, and it reaches uh, a little bit more clearly uh, the public that we're working with. So. I'm excited about that because it's it's really really showing a lot of potential and a lot of people are getting really excited and it lifted lifts up energy and a sense of hope and I think that's also pretty exciting. It's what we need. Brilliant, Erica. Thank you. So lots of us will have heard about regenerative approaches and I, I really when when you first explain to somebody how a regenerative approach is going to be different from maybe what they've experienced before, how how do you introduce it? How, how, yeah. We actually, well, we actually do use the word regenerative uh, development, uh, but we try to um, use other words like value added, 
And we actually often um, uh, show the spiral, which is really, really graphic, which uh, describes the different levels of, of how development uh, at a regional level or community level or even national level can, can evolve. And, and we also say that it's a step-by-step -step process, that it's not something that you can like leap from, from one level to several levels up, that it really is a learning journey and uh, a developmental process in effect. And that seems to really uh, connect and, and be understood by, by uh, a wide public. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that answers <laughs> the question, no. but um, yeah. So it's, do you want me to explain regenerative development as, as well or, or how? Brief, briefly, yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure okay. everybody on the call will, know, uh, will be familiar okay, with that. Okay, certainly, okay, yes. So regenerative development, is um, takes um, the concept of sustainable development a couple steps further. Uh, the, our, the main argument is that uh, right now the world isn't, uh, we aren't able to sustain how we are living in the world, and uh, at least in Spanish and in Catalan, which is uh, where I mostly work, the, um, uh, that the word sustainable means to sustain, to, to keep the, the development system as it is. Um, so, try, and trying to have this uh, neutral or zero impact and not degrade, but not regenerate. So this regenerative approach was actually, from what we understand and how, how we're learning it and, and exploring it and developing it as well, comes from, uh, or is largely inspired by uh, communities that are beyond sustainable. So regenerative communities, a lot of them being indigenous communities as well, or rural and very, uh, have a very strong sense of place and a, long, a strong uh, cultural identity related to place. So after sustainability, there's um, the next level will be to restore. And this uh, restores to previous levels that are, um, uh, that have uh, a lot more integrity in terms of social relations, uh, uh, ecology as well. Uh, and then you go into reconciliation which uh, looks to, to see uh, how we can pull from all of the sides or all of the tensions to build something new. And then the highest level up to now that we're working with is the regenerative level. So essentially beyond sustainability means you're adding complexity, adding energy to the system. So in fact, regenerating the quality. Brilliant, thank you, Erica. Philippe, does that, does that all make sense in your context? So I, I heard Erica talk about beyond reconciliation and beyond sustainability. Do, do, in your work, are we getting some sense of beyond? Um, is it in the way that it changes over the years, how it's different from what it might have been 20 years ago? Hello. Le, le concept de régénération euh, pas du tout présent dans mon univers. Ce n'est pas quelque chose qui, que je côtoie, que je connais. C'est euh, bon, l'idée d'aller au-delà de la réconciliation. Euh, en fait, moi, je, je travaille toujours dans le dialogue sur, les, sur deux dimensions. Euh, et suivant les processus, une dimension est plus importante que l'autre. Ces deux dimensions, c'est premièrement résoudre un problème ou améliorer une situation. Et deuxièmement, améliorer une relation entre, entre des, des organisations, des groupes d'acteurs, des personnes. Donc, il y a toujours ces deux dimensions. Euh, résoudre un problème, construire un projet et améliorer une relation. Euh, voilà, donc déjà, euh, euh, y a pas, je ne cherche pas, bien sûr, à ce que les gens deviennent des amis. Je cherche à faire en sorte qu'ils puissent se parler et résoudre des problèmes communs ensemble. C'est différent. Euh, voilà, euh, qu'est-ce que tu me posais, euh, Chris, comme question déjà J'ai perdu le fil. Bon. No, don't worry. I, I was just trying to get the sense of what's new in your field, Philippe. So what, 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 where's the edge? What's, what, what's moving and different from 20 years ago? Oui. Euh, alors, il faut que... Il y, y a effectivement une évolution qui est très intéressante. 
cette évolution, un, je dirais que c'est un changement de culture parmi les, dans les nouvelles générations. Euh, alors, je parle pour l'instant euh, essentiellement de la France. Hein, je ne veux pas me hasarder sur d'autres pays. Et même si je, je travaille aussi parfois dans d'autres pays, mais, mais je parle essentiellement de la France où là, je peux voir dans la durée une évolution dans la culture de, de la culture du dialogue. Euh, en France, on a une tradition très forte du débat, du débat polémique, avec « je suis pour, je suis contre ». Et sur la scène publique, c'est encore ce qui domine euh, actuellement. Mais depuis 20 ans, il y a une progression de nouvelles formes de dialogue qui sortent de ce paradigme du débat pour adopter d'autres principes qui sont des principes où ce qui domine, ce n'est pas savoir si on est d'accord ou pas avec l'autre, mais savoir si on est capable de comprendre l'autre dans sa différence. Et deuxième évolution, euh, il y a une, une aspiration de plus en plus grande chez les jeunes générations, alors je parle de générations 20 ans, 30 ans, hein, à euh, intégrer, à prendre en compte les différentes dimensions de notre humanité. Autrefois, on était vraiment très centré sur euh, le cerveau, la rationalité, et aujourd'hui, on accepte de prendre en compte dans le dialogue euh, communautaire, dans le dialogue territorial, d'autres dimensions de notre humanité, comme par exemple euh, ce qui relève des perceptions et surtout ce qui relève des émotions, des, de, des émotions, des besoins. Et je trouve que, voilà, et nous, on, on, euh, le, 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 le travail qu'on mène aujourd'hui est de mieux en mieux euh, reçu, accepté par euh, ces nouvelles générations. Et que moi, je suis étonné de voir comment euh, aujourd'hui, il y a une, même un appétit pour intégrer ces dimensions. Brilliant, thank you, Philippe. And I'm really interested to make the connections to what you're saying, Philippe, and what we were hearing from Erica. And it, it feels to me that the so that in terms of making connections, there's that there was two two things you were highlighting there. So one was the the younger generations, and then one was the connecting with not just an internet intellectual analysis of the problem, but the different perceptions, the emotions, the senses, um, the, the, the different needs and situation. So Erica, may, may, does, I see you nodding, I saw a thumbs up along the way. Um, you, you might just explain how, how does what Philippe was saying then about younger generations and different perceptions, how, do, how does that come up in, in your regenerative work? Well, I think uh, it's, uh, yeah, I would agree. Thank you so much, Philippe. Um, the, in terms of younger generations, I mean, I work uh, as a cooperative, we work exclusively in rural regions, uh, mostly in Catalonia, but also in other countries. And, um, and what we find does not work is a discourse or a conversation that is intellectual or um, catastrophic. You know, and, and really um, what we're finding is, is really, that is really important is uh, to engage them deeply at an emotional level and also with a, um, with a discourse that's rooted in hope, right? So, and, and that's co-creative and participatory um, and they are really excited to, to participate in governance. Um, they get it like that way faster than than other generations and and that is really exciting so we're seeing where usually there's a big gap in the youth voice in governance processes uh what we're seeing in the projects um, with this different approach is that the, the youth are, are really present really active and and actually leading and and uh and generating spin-off projects um in at, like at the municipal level but even up, up, up higher And uh, so that would be the emotional connection and the younger generation's connection. And also, uh, Philippe didn't mention it directly, but in terms of the type of uh, projects that are um, 
that can be co-created and dialogued at a at a local level. I would leave it more there, and then in a networked level. Um, another uh, emergent field that's like in five years has grown, at least in our region, from just a few organizations to we're now representing over 700 workers. Is um, transformative economies. So social solidarity economy. People are seeing a real hope in in the that their livelihoods can be based where they're from, and that that those livelihoods can be very diverse, very rich, and um, and serve a, a serve a community purpose. So that I, I think yeah, I'll just add that as well. Great, right. thank thank you, Erica. So I heard things there about hope. Um, diff different aspects about action and projects uh, and particularly centering that in some kind of idea about new economy so again we'll maybe just connect that back to you Philippe and, and, and with your work in in France uh, does, does that make sense if we talk talk about wanting to have a focus on hope and positive things and not just on the problems um, and yeah how, how we bridge from a discussion about something to to actually doing things and potentially does it I don't know whether your work goes there to change changing how the economy works. Alors, uh, um, je, je vais essayer de, 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 de tricoter enfin de faire le lien avec ce que dit Erika mais je suis pas sûr d'y arriver bien. Ça demande sûrement plus de temps de compréhension. Euh, moi, ce, que, ce qui me paraît important dans mon travail, c'est de partir à chaque fois de la, de la compréhension de ce qui vraiment motive chacun. Donc, euh, d'une certaine façon, euh, oui, c est, c est, alors, euh, par exemple, je, je vais donner un exemple vécu hier soir dans la réunion que j'ai animée. Hier soir, donc, euh, on avait préparé euh, une scène de dialogue depuis plusieurs mois pour mettre autour de la table des agriculteurs, des associations locales, notamment qui travaillent sur l'alimentation, l'agriculture durable, enfin qui sont plutôt des associations militantes, des élus de la, de la, de la communauté, de la commune, euh, des, euh, sûrement d'autres, mais euh, avec l'idée comment on peut faire ensemble pour que ce que produisent les agriculteurs de, cette, de ce territoire, euh, au lieu d'être envoyés à l'autre bout du monde, puissent euh, alimenter en partie les, les, les habitants de cette commune. Et ça fait des années que, euh, les, le, que la, la, les autorités, la, la municipalité, euh, se demandent comment faire. Et, euh, et notamment, avec un l'idée, c'est qu'on puisse aussi augmenter dans l'alimentation, la part de produits biologiques, de, 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 issus de l'agriculture biologique. Et, euh, et hier soir, euh, j'ai été frappé à un moment donné par cette dimension émotionnelle qu'a exprimé un agriculteur, un jeune agriculteur, euh, qui a plutôt une, une, une exploitation, une ferme qui, qui fonctionne bien, qui n'a qui, qui a, qui a pas de soucis financiers, euh, et qui a une partie de sa production bio, pas, pas tout, et qui dit, euh, moi, ce qui serait vraiment important pour moi, enfin, si je pouvais me trouver une solution pour euh, que une partie de ma production, même une toute petite partie, puisse alimenter mes voisins, je, ça me rendrait très fier. Et en fait, on s'est rendu compte à ce moment-là que le ressort, ce n'était pas un, une question d'argent, par, par exemple, euh, parce que c'est une commune où, les, où les, les revenus sont relativement bas. C'est une ancienne ville de, de, de minière. Et, et donc, aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup de chômage, beaucoup de pauvreté, et les gens n'ont pas de grosses ressources. Et donc, la question de l'alimentation biologique pose problème pour le, le prix. Et lui, il a dit, mais moi, je suis même prêt à, à, à faire des prix plus bas pour que des gens de ma commune puissent manger ces produits-là, parce que c'est pour moi une fierté. Donc, donc, voilà un ressort positif euh, qui n'est qui est évidemment pas du tout de l'ordre du rationnel, encore moins de la rationalité économique, parce que sur le plan économique, ça n'a aucun intérêt pour lui, mais vraiment quelque chose qui est… 
c'est vrai que quand il dit ça dans une assemblée et que euh, les élus de la commune, euh, les associations l'écoutent, euh, eh bien, vous, je, vous pouvez imaginer le, comment ça contribue à, à, à créer de la communauté, parce que, à créer de la, du rapprochement, de la compréhension. Voilà, un petit exemple, vraiment, euh, qui, qui montre combien le, la, 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 le fait d'arriver à, à donner de l'espace à, à des personnes pour qu'ils puissent exprimer ce qu'il y a au fond d'eux, ce qui les motive, est important. I get a sense that some of what we maybe have been doing in our careers is we we thought we were working on issues and problems and you know the the environment or the economy or inclusion in society or whatever and it's almost as if we're now finding out we're working on emotions and energy and maybe vitality you're nodding again Erica so I presume that's making some kind of sense Erica go on Look. I, no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and 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 we see that, like how the energy field, even in a, in a room, changes and shifts depending on how how you're, you know, how people are being engaged, how um, what the topic is, and and the importance of sustaining that um, that energy field and really making sure that you know uh, people are rallying, you know, they they feel that collective um spirit uh philippe kind of talked about it a little bit like this uh this farmer you know who 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 wants to contribute to uh his uh his neighbor's um well-being through good food access to good food i mean it's a simple example but i think it's it's a really really uh, uh accurate one you know and it's just this this uh um yeah through 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 connection which happens at all the levels, but including emotional, um, it increases community well-being, you know, it, or increases at least starting with a sense of, of community, you know, and, and I think that's that's uh, essential. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when when actually one of our objectives, when we never write it down, when we give people the, the session plan for the for the uh, process, but one of our in as as uh, change facilitators is um uh look after the space uh energetically and also bring up the 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 spirit the the sense of hope yeah brilliant so we're, we're going to close the conversation between the three of us soon um and we'll be we'll ask everybody a question and then we'll move into some breakout conversations just before we close i'm really interested in the combining really this energy piece, emotion and energy piece we've just been talking about with the, the intergenerational piece that we were mentioning earlier. Because it feels to me that part of getting the energy piece right is about the relationships between the generations. So we've got you know older people who want to honor traditions and who've come from certain ways of being and so on. Younger people who are often not included, but if they're going to be included, need to be included in the right kind of way. And and generations in between as well. I don't know if you, any last reflections from your side, Philippe, on, on how we do all of this. How do we get the emotion, energy, intergenerational piece to, to, to all come together? Non, je n'ai pas, pas de réflexion particulière sur le lien entre générations qui nous viennent. Euh, Excuse-moi, Chris, je, vais, je, je, je voudrais juste, euh, juste poursuivre un petit peu le, la réflexion précédente. Yes, go on. <rire> Parce que no, euh, tu as touché quelque chose d'important en parlant, de, en mettant en évidence, et, et Rika l'a tout appuyé en disant le travail sur les émotions, sur l'énergie est important. Et, on, et je partage complètement. Euh, et en même temps, alors je vais donner un petit, un petit chose pour équilibrer. Il faut vraiment, vraiment euh, parler de choses très concrètes euh, avec la plupart des gens. Il faut travailler sur des choses concrètes. Euh, hier soir, on a, il y a eu ce moment où cet agriculteur, ce jeune agriculteur, a parlé de, sa fierté, de la fierté qu'il aurait à fournir 
ses voisins. Mais on a parlé aussi euh, des poireaux qu'il produit et, euh, et, et, et de, de, voilà, de, de, des questions. Et de, qui est-ce qui a besoin de poireaux euh, Qui est-ce qui a besoin de. Quels sont les légumes qu'on a en place Où est-ce qu'on ne trouve pas de légumes aujourd'hui Où est-ce qu'on en trouve Donc, on est vraiment sur des choses très concrètes, ce que je vais manger tous les jours hein, et comment je vais vendre mes produits si je suis paysan. Euh, et donc, euh, euh, moi, je fais très attention à ça. Ouais. Euh, on, et, et, et surtout, quand on engage un processus de dialogue euh, qui est appelé à durer longtemps parce que, on aura toujours besoin année après année. Euh, il faut à la fois être, euh, avoir une perspective sur le long terme en se disant euh, c'est vraiment fait pour renforcer la communauté, pour euh, créer, créer de la coopération, mais il faut aussi avoir des résultats très vite, des petites choses qui vont avancer. On va peut-être réussir à, par exemple, hier soir, on a... On a on a constitué un petit groupe qui va travailler tout simplement d'abord sur la production d'un flyer où on va, il va y avoir toute la liste des productions qui sont disponibles sur la commune et que beaucoup de gens ne savent pas, ne savent même pas ce que les paysans localement produisent. Et donc, il va y avoir un travail qui va être fait par un groupe de bénévoles avec l'appui de, des autorités pour produire un petit document qui pourra être distribué à tout le monde, mis sur Internet pour que déjà les gens savent où ils peuvent trouver des choses localement. Voilà, des petites choses très concrètes doivent être produites très vite pour donner, pour, euh, donner envie, pour montrer que ce n'est pas simplement bla, 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 bla. <rire> Et c'est des choses qui changent dans ma vie. Great. Thank, thank you, Philippe. Um, any closing comments for this section you want to make, Erica, before we move on to the other questions? things I, I i really hear from philippe the balance of the practical with all the other components that we've been talking about as well sorry is this bit still about intergenerational or is that you, the next? You, up, up to you just what what feels like a good closing yeah. piece um no well it's, it's okay yeah I, i had an example about interge intergenerational dialogue but um but if that's okay uh, yeah We'll, we'll, we'll come back to we'll come back to both of you uh, later on in the session but i think uh, davy we're about to move to or shortly going to move to the breakout rooms and if we're okay i'll just do the mentimeter question before we do that davy yeah thanks for that chris and thanks erica and philippe it was a rich conversation there's some very interesting insights in the in the chat there please keep adding reflections links to resources or ideas in the chat. We're going to use Mentimeter uh, to take some questions, um, to look at some, uh, an answer to this question here, which we've kept really open. I've put it in the chat now as well. From what we've heard from your own practice, what is interesting you most? Uh, so there it's in the chat, Chris has got it open. Um, there it is in the, the shared screen. Can you still see your chat though? Just so uh, you can get to mentimeter.com. If you're struggling to use another app, just put it into the chat and we can reflect on that. But here it comes. People are starting to put something into the Mentimeter. So how to create meaningful dialogues with people that are not used to it. I think that's really important when we're facilitating. Um, sorry, my... Uh, the human link, I would say. human suggest. link, that's nice. Um, yeah, I think uh, what, what, what Philippe was saying about keeping it practical, uh, to me, is keeping it human. Uh, sometimes we can get too intellectual. Uh, Sean highlighted there in the, in the chat that a lot of the time, Some of these dialogues are held by civil servants that have no emotion, just the intellectual. Um, the co-creation, that's interesting, uh, that we're co-creating something together, um, building community through dialogue. That's interesting that we're building a sense of relationship, a deeper sense of place through uh, dialogues, inner territories, the emotional connection people are finding interesting. Um, 
connecting to place, to ourselves, our bodies, and to other living beings. So a holistic approach to what we are as a human being. It's nice. How to give local communities the power, the need for the transformation needed. I think in this context that we're in now and this decade that has to be transformative uh, for our species ex um, um, survival on this planet, then really the dialogue in our local places that help make that transformation in our local places. Accompanying a new generation to better dialogue, that's interesting. How to involve young people, great. Chris, how's your French? So where are we on the on the left? It disappeared again. But... Approach a subject for the for co-construction rather than deconstruction. Great. Building so think... perspectives, sharing perspectives to act. I think that agency, sense of agency is interesting. Chris? The, there's something in co-construction rather than deconstruction about how we become more holistic and more interconnected rather than breaking it down, rather than breaking it into little fragments and little parts. So mm. we, you know, when we're dealing with complicated things, we often think the way to deal with it is to split it up into lots of little pieces. Whereas actually in the dialogue, we can say, all right, this is connected to this and to this and to this. And gradually we get more whole and more connected. Yeah. Um, well, it moves around a lot, this, doesn't it? So connecting to place, or we've read that one. Um, um, making connections across cultures and languages. I mean, this is interesting, these Forum Synergy webinars when we can have translation is fantastic for us um, English speaking to make that connection across other languages and have these conversations. Um, but even locally now uh, across cultures, even across uh, different worldviews or different uh, perspectives that we hold. Feeding further than body and mind. Imagining together. I think that's really interesting. Uh, dialogue is a space uh, for imagining together um, so that they are inclusive. But this uh, crisis of imagination that we have, uh, the, the participate of dialogue may help draw out uh, options we hadn't thought about, the creative process of imagining. Do you see any more, Chris, that we... No, I, I, I think we're, we're probably slowing up, David, which is probably a good sign that we're about ready to move to the breakout rooms if you're... Uh, yeah, if you want to stop good. sharing, then I'll just introduce that. Yeah. So thanks, everyone. We can still feed into that, and Marina can share that in, in a report with everyone. I think it would be interesting. So we're going to actually go into small groups just to have a conversation. And the, the question that we're interested in, uh, let's keep it, keeping it open. Um, what, what advice would you give to people seeking to develop dialogue in our local area, in our, in our territories? So I'll just put that into the chat. Um, so again, I'll just repeat it and maybe... Isabel, you can translate. What advice? So we're going to go into a breakout. You'll be in a room with five other people. Um, there's one French speaking group and the rest are in English. And just from your own experience of what you heard, what advice would you give to people seeking to develop dialogue in our local areas, territories? What things do we need to be observant? And what, what do we need to consider and think about? So that's really our open question. The speakers are also going into the breakouts. Isabel, you can have a break from your fantastic um, translation. Um, you, you will have 15 minutes here. Um, so remember, in a group of five, you should be listening four times as much as you're speaking, just to make sure that everyone's participating. There are, there are some people like Darius, who has said he's sick, so he's just observing. So some people in your breakout uh, may not be as active. And the objective here is just to have a good conversation. And again, we'll harvest that conversation, some of the insights from that conversation when we come back to the main room. So hopefully that's okay. You'll be taken to your breakout. 
enjoy your conversation and we'll see you in 15 minutes. Going to continue. Oh, uh, we are going to continue uh, with our uh, question and mentimeter, uh, a final reflection, final harvest, if you like. And our question is what would be most useful in helping us move forward? So, this is as practitioners of dialogue, as community activists, what would be most useful in moving us forward? Um, so again, you hopefully you've got that Mentimeter open. There's the code uh, there that Chris has put up. So any thoughts, any reflections from what you've heard? from what we heard in the conversation with the practitioners, sharing new processes, some new methodologies maybe for hosting dialogue and conversations in our territories, regular exchange and connection amongst our community to facilitate co-learning, it's interesting. So regular conversations, regular connection, regular dialogue. Pre preparatory take Techniques are rational, cultural, traditional elements, cultural, traditional elements. Thank you. To remember that we're all humans and humans are skilled with communications. So even though some may resist, opening up the dialogue is always possible. That's really lovely uh, to remember that we've been doing dialogue uh, since we emerged as a species. To strengthen the role of local activists, um, resource facilitation on the ground for broader effective dialogue. We're gonna really need this now with the climate dialogues that are emerging across Europe, uh, that those are resourced and aren't just uh, exercise and consultation. Be positive, practical, um, persevere. I, I think, David, we have to ask that person to unmute and maybe tell us the freight should be proportioned to the groove. And good, good luck with the interpreter for that. Um, does, does the person who wrote the freight should be proportioned to the groove want to just maybe explain that a little bit more? If that person is with us. It's interesting, yeah. That's, that's um, me, that's me actually. Caroline, Caroline, go. Yeah, it's from a poem and Elizabeth, um, is it Elizabeth, Elizabeth? Oh, sorry, I can't remember her name. She, she, she um, yeah, but it's from a poem and it kind of really means to have things um, to, 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 to do what is appropriate to, to, to kind of respond appropriate to the need, you know, to kind of match the solution to the problem, basically. Mm -hmm. And also yeah. maybe the approaches to the people, you know, in being engaged with. That, that's kind of what I just thought it might be, you know, it's it suited that. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, thanks, Thank Caroline. Uh, are these enjoyable processes, integrating the arts and creative resources? I think that's really interesting to, to really unlock that imagination, that creativity um, that makes people comfortable learning from specific questions, cases that can be done instead of generalized talks, sharing across borders and boundaries, maintaining the growth in community participation. Lovely. And just from the chat, because Darius is uh, in his sick bed, but he is saying that it's helpful to establish tradition to meet regularly in welcoming spaces. I think that's uh, a really good point as well. Um, yeah, local libraries. So I think in the, the French speaking group, I think we're probably saying something about spaces. So there's something about uh, apprenticeship spaces uh, that somebody had. And uh, the, yeah, just the, that we have spaces that cult, that welcome, that cultivate uh, yeah. this kind of work and that build this kind of work. I and mean, that, that those ideas about spaces are really interesting as well. 
and uh, voluntary simplicity. I see getting a mention in, in one of the French responses as well. Mm. Um, yeah, incoherence with values. Making dialogue a fixed element of communities, not only when there's a problem to solve. That's interesting. So building relationships, connections, uh, deepening our sense of place uh, and, and territory and community. Acknowledging and involving and embracing diversity in this just transition that we need to make now is so important that more marginal voices are included uh, or people not often brought into the dialogue are engaged with. That's great. We've got an introducing a new vocabulary uh, just there in the middle. Um, I think that the role of language is really important and that just you know, each time we use new words or new metaphors, they can kind of ripple out and have quite an effect. So it's really interesting, just, you know, as Erica was talking about regenerative, even just using the word makes a difference or, mm -hmm. or labeling something Fridays for the future, you know, makes an impact and it ripples out. And so, I'm, I'm, yeah, really interesting in just being clever about how we use language and help some things to stick. I like that one, pushing officials to be more personal and find a better job if possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, just inviting anyone that wants to actually speak, if you want to unmute and maybe uh, come in and just uh, share an insight. And then I'm going to invite our three speakers, uh, Chris, Erica and Philippe, maybe to share a last reflection. So is anyone interested to just unmute and hear some other voices? Starting from cultural pillar of sustainable development, encompassing other pillars moderated in the atmosphere of regenerative approach, introducing the new vocabulary, also on sociocracy, uh, which some people may have heard of sociocracy, um, governance by the people, and it's really uh, picking up as a way to self-organize in our local places. Working with conflict as a nourishing force, moving us towards reconciliation and co-creation again, so that co-creation, co-production in our local places, and coming together to create together. Go through tensions, conflicts, and do not fear them before starting to co-construct. Interesting. So maybe I could come in, Davey, just for a moment yeah. or two, and then we can, we can invite uh, Erica and Philippe to come in as well. Um, I'm really interested in how things can most usefully spread for the purposes of this call, as I understand it, across Europe. Um, so, you know, Dennis and our group in the small group that I was in was talking about, you know, really interesting things in Slovenia, where, you know, that because they've been focusing on smart villages and broadband, they had the technology to work relatively well with COVID and, and, and you know, try and build some strengths from difficult situations there. But just in, in, in different places across Europe, you know, interesting stories going on. So how, you know, how can those stories be you, captured and used to inspire and stimulate other activities in other places? It's, it seems to me mm -hmm. that there's a lot of really interesting things going on that, that, that can look quite different and in the conversations today, we're just starting to pick out there are particular themes, issues, ways of working that even though stories can look quite different, we sort of have in common um, and that we can adapt to our local context because always we have to fit with our local context uh, yeah. and, and the particular issues that we're working with. So, so that, that's just what occurs to me is, is, is how can we get better and better uh, capturing and sharing the stories in a way that inspires us to be able to work with all our different local contexts. And again, I think that's one of the challenges that we, we have lost the ability to imagine what might be possible in our territory. And by seeing a story of another community's uh, struggle or something they've developed together, I think can really help um, 
give that inspiration, as you're saying. Erica and um, Philippe, I'm just going to ask if you want to share any final reflections of anything that's coming up for you. Erica? You're, uh, I can't hear you for some reason. Maybe if we try Philippe, because I can't hear Erica either. Yeah. D'accord. Ça va, vous m'entendez? Oui. Yeah. Uh, yes, we hear you loud and clear, Philippe. Il y a, y a, y a, y a une, une petite phrase qui est dans le, dans le Mentimètre, là, qui m'a vraiment fait sourire. Euh, C'est « Push the officials to be more personal, and if they cannot, uh, they find another job. Euh, » J'ai trouvé ça génial. <rire> Pourquoi Parce que… Bah parce que parce que c'est vraiment un des soucis qu'on rencontre dans les scènes de dialogue territorial. C'est un des soucis, ce n'est pas le seul, mais c'en est un. Est de, ça rejoint la discussion qu'on a eue tout à l'heure sur l'importance le, le, qu'il y a aujourd'hui et la possibilité qu'on a à mobiliser de plus en plus toutes les dimensions de notre humanité. Hein, C'était... C'est quelque chose qui m'a frappé dans la conversation du début de, du webinaire. C'est comme ça résonnait cette question-là entre nous, le fait qu'on n'est pas simplement des cerveaux rationnels, intellectuels, qu'on a, qu a des émotions, qu'on a des perceptions avec nos sens, qu'on a des besoins, etc. Et effectivement, euh, c'est quelque chose qui est probablement plus difficile pour les « the officials » d'atteindre ou de laisser sortir ces autres dimensions de leur humanité. Et du coup, dans un processus de dialogue, parfois ça complique les choses parce qu'on reste là alors qu'il faut descendre dans le corps. Euh, donc euh, voilà, moi je, je retiendrai vraiment euh, cette, euh, cette, euh, cette, euh, cette centrale qui, que nous avons partagée, qui, qui me touche beaucoup, c'est euh, comment pour résoudre des problèmes collectifs on peut de plus en plus, on peut le faire, mais comment le faire et comment, le, 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 l l comment dire, le faire devenir comme une culture importante, cette question des, des différentes dimensions. Et j'ai envie de rajouter une autre, un autre élément que, que je n'ai pas abordé, qui n'a pas été abordé, parce qu'il y a une phrase qui dit « renforcer le rôle des facilitateurs ». Euh, et je suis d'accord et je, en même temps je ne suis pas tout à fait d'accord euh, je voudrais vraiment insister sur le fait que pour moi le dialogue est une fonction essentielle de notre humanité et bien sûr on a besoin de spécialistes à certains moments de facilitateurs mais je pense qu'il faut qu'on travaille tous quand on est des professionnels de la médiation de la facilitation pour diffuser notre savoir-faire le plus largement possible. Je vous donne un exemple. Le travail que je mène avec cette, cette commune, cette ville du nord de la France sur l'autonomie alimentaire, euh, c'est un travail qui va durer plusieurs années. Et euh, il n'est pas question que moi, je, pour des raisons ne serait-ce que de, de, de coût et de, et de coût, euh, que je travaille, que j'accompagne ce processus pendant plusieurs années. Donc, ce que j'ai proposé à, à la municipalité, à la commune, c'est de, en même temps que je conduis, que je démarre le processus, je vais former euh, des personnes locales qui pourront prendre le relais de la facilitation, qui pourront jouer un rôle de facilitateur local pour leur propre communauté. Et donc, ça, c'est une question vraiment de plus en plus importante pour moi, c'est à la fois, de, bien sûr, d'intervenir quand il le faut, mais de m'assurer qu'une partie de, du savoir-faire que j'ai acquis peut être partagée avec les gens localement. Thank you, Philippe, and thanks, Isabel, for the interpretation. That's fantastic. Uh, Erica, do you want to try again? We couldn't hear you the last time. 
We still can't hear you. Okay. No. Don't know why we can't hear you. No. Oh. Well, we can hear you, but it's echoey. But let's go. Well, let's. Um... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the the in installed mic. I'll speak uh, slowly and clearly then if there's too much echo. That's good. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I would just highlight a couple points, um, building upon also what Philippe has said, but um, uh, maybe focusing on governance because I think uh, dialogue. Uh, is is a really essential part of collective governance, and I think that's where we're moving towards with this kind of territorial dialogue. And um, as and, and well, I, I consider the the um, governance, I think, is actually the the make or break how we uh, govern our communities is the make or break of where we're going. It really, really defines it. And there are two things I think there in terms of the dialogue that we need for this collective governance is the importance of diversity, not just uh, to listen to, but also to be deeply involved. If that doesn't mean you have to engage everybody in the community, but uh, make sure that you have the voices of the community, uh, the diversity of the community present in, even if it's a small committee, that's uh, that's powering the the uh, process of dialogue, and um, and also have that diversity um, in in all the other phases that require dialogue. So implementation, um, evaluation, and co-creation. Uh, again, following that cycle. And the second one is uh, the importance of not just acknowledging conflict. Um, or tensions, but um, having them nourish. And so here I would pull in some examples from Indigenous communities that they really celebrate both diverse opinions as well as tensions, um, because they say that those are, those are the building blocks, if we're able to reconcile those tensions, of uh, the new futures. Right, so they they talk about like our next steps are are for the seven generations when we're working towards um, how where our community is going and how to live and be as a community. Um, it's really really important to not push away or ignore conflict and tension, but use that uh, as uh, as something that feeds into the future because they're really important flags that are telling us. Uh, key information about how the community is. Brilliant. Thanks, Erica. So um, uh, we're coming to the end there. Thank you, Erica. Uh, thanks, Philippe. And thanks, Chris, uh, for your contributions. Uh, thanks, everyone that has uh, engaged today. Um, and I'm just going to hand over now to Marina uh, to make the final words. Thank you. Um... Thank you, Davy. So in just two minutes, um, I think that we had a very rich half an hour exchange. Uh, I was just revising the, the notes and we have been discussing about different approaches, how uh, in France and, uh, and the, the debate and, uh, and, and the, how the new generations also are, are entering into dialogue. The approach of regenerative approach also has been opening maybe uh, uh, a new uh, concept for some of us who are talking about sustainability. Maybe we have now to go uh, uh, and, and start talking about regeneration. Um, the, um, the groups and, and the suggestions uh, we, we had in the breaking rooms, uh, I think that everybody would like to have much more time to, uh, to follow discussing and, and exchanging about that. I mean, I'm, I'm still uh, wondering what was this experience Erica was uh, talking about and, and, and have something more in detail. So to make it short, um, I think that, yeah, we had a, a good time to, uh, to arrange uh, to an to enrich ourselves about these different uh, different approaches of dialogue that are connecting ourselves also, and the 25 or 30 uh, of us uh, beyond the digital uh, and geographical limits. And uh, to be honest, I don't know, I don't have a clear picture about uh, what will be the next step. Uh, it's something we still have to discuss within uh, forum synergies. 
but in a way or another, I think that uh, these needs expressed, these recommendations, these advices um, will be taken into account to um, when we define also how we could contribute in the next European Parliament, which will take place uh, next year. And uh, I know that Davy is also involved. So in a way or another, I, I think that there is a, a, a way of connect to connect uh, these um, reflections on dialogue because they are also uh, at, the, at the heart of, of the general reflection of, uh, of the European Parliament. How can we empower communities? How uh, can we make their, their voice heard? heard? And uh, how can they become more um, yeah, can, can they govern, have that uh, collective governance that uh, Erika was mentioning? Um, just a concrete step, as we were also talking about concrete step, what, what I can do, we will share the video with you and all the elements or the, the documents or references you mentioned. Um, what I could also propose is that um, we send you a form when you, you can agree if you want or not to share your um, your data with the others so we have a list of participants you know that questions of private privacy it's, i can't send it directly but if you agree then uh, i think that there is a starting point and you can already start also to exchange with the others um, and um, and also if you are interested in sharing your experience remember that we have a resource center on forum synergies so if you want to share it, share some documents, share some information, it's the place for you also. So this is our small uh, uh, way of, of, uh, concreting, of concrete actions. Uh, and I will just finalize saying thank you. Thanks to the core group for your time, for your commitment, for your energy in preparing that. Uh, Davy from Cultivate, Chris from um, Change, I don't remember the name, <laughs> sorry, Philippe from Gezer and Erika uh, from uh, Residence Earth. And thanks to everybody, to all of you for your time, for your interest and for your contributions. Uh, we'll keep you informed. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Great question. Thank you. Okay.